So we can influence people by giving them something and then asking them for something in return. But what if we don't have anything to give them, or it's not normal or appropriate to give a gift in this context? Well, we can still use the principle of reciprocation to get people to do what we want. Rather than give them a gift, we give them a concession and then ask for a concession from them. This variation of the rule for reciprocation is also called the door in the face technique. The idea here is to start with an extreme request that you fully expect to be rejected because it's unreasonable. When you inevitably get rejected, you retreat to a more moderate request. This second request is the request that you wanted to make all along. The concession that you've made by falling back to this more moderate request is what creates the pressure on the other person to make a reciprocal concession to you. The only concession that they can really make is to agree to your second request. This happens in negotiation situations. Think about an employee union negotiating about employment conditions with the company's management. The union and the management representatives don't just make their demands about what they actually want. They come out with a ridiculously big demand which they know very well is unfair and understand very well that it's never going to be met. The unions might go, well, we want 50% pay increases for everyone and everyone should get back rubs and have a company car. Then the management will be like, no, 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 we'll give you a 50% pay cut and you'll have to work weekends for no pay and eat bread and dripping for lunch. So why would you bother? Why would you bother starting at a level which you know is never going to be met? This is an example of an ambit claim or a blue sky demand where a ridiculous demand is made first with the expectation of future compromise. The reason is psychological, of course, because when you start up here and then you make a concession from the ridiculously high point, you can make a big song and dance about, well, now I've made this concession to you. Now, the moral pressure is on the other person to make a concession as well. This is often how high-level conflicts can be diffused. One side makes a concession, which puts pressure on the other side to do the same. So why does this work? Part of the reason that it works is because humans are better at making relative judgments than absolute judgments. When preceded by a very large request, subsequent requests seem more reasonable.